Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, Norwegian Red presentation session. My name is uh, Diego Galli and I'm regional sales manager for uh, at Gino for uh, in the uh, in EMEA region. Uh, I'm delighted to be hosting this presentation today with my colleague uh, Howard Tayet, who is um, our chief technology and innovation officer and is uh, responsible for the entire breeding program for the Norwegian Red breed. In this session today, we are going to discuss, or I, I must say, the impressive genetic progress that we have been achieving in the last years. And the data we will see today are also interpreted using the latest Interpol uh, genetic uh, evaluation in August uh, uh, 2022. Um, we are doing that because uh, we, we feel that it's very important to share our findings with, uh, with dairy customer and with uh, all our distributor to help you to discuss and communicate uh, with the, within the industry um, all the benefits and all the potential of the regional genetics. Um, so uh, let's start with the presentation and maybe Howard, you can give us a quick introduction about yourself and uh, what are you doing at Gino, uh, please. Thank you, Diego. Yes, it's great to have this opportunity to, to present and discuss these results. Yes, I've been working in Geno since 2015, and uh, I work now with, with, with the breeding, and I'm in charge of the breeding program, genetic progress, and implementation of the research and development that we are conducting. Good, thanks a lot, uh, Howard. Now we um, let's gas let's start with the with the data, and uh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. We should uh, we should have the, the fourth figure here, and uh, this is about the genetic trend for Norwegian red bulls uh, in the past twenty years, and uh, I can easily see that uh, the trend is extremely positive, and that's very good news. And uh, please, or share um, your comment about uh, this figure. Yes. Um, first of all, just a few words about the total merit index. It's an aggregated breeding value uh, where we sum up all the uh, important, key important traits that we work with in our breeding program. Um, and as you said, uh, Diego, it's a tremendous acceleration in genetic gain where we move from from 2 to 5.6 index points per year. Just want to explain a little bit about these points. Is it big or small? So just to let you know, 12 points is one standard deviation. So for these bulls, we are close to half a standard deviation improvement per year, which we think is huge. And that's uh, that's really, really great to know. Uh, thanks, Aura. Just a question uh, I would like to, to ask you. Uh, what's the main re reason for this uh, very positive trend that we were able to achieve? Well, of course, it's been a, a journey, a uh, huge development, and for the whole world, new technology has come into the area of, of breeding, and this is, of course, genomic selection. Uh, first, in this uh, blue period from 2001 onwards, we based our breeding on progeny testing like everyone else. It was daughter proofs. And um, in 2012, we introduced a pre-selection of young test bulls based on genomics, but still we were proving the bulls. Um, and then in 2016, we did a full transition to genomic selection, where we selected the young sires as elite bulls directly. And as you can see, this has made a stepwise acceleration. And uh, I want to point out that we are still in a change because when we first started with genomic selection, accuracies would tend to be typically 0.6 for production traits, for instance. We had uh, at the beginning limited number of genotypes, uh, of course, but now we have reached and, more than 180,000 genotypes in our system, in our nucleus. And we have accuracies for production traits around 0.8, which is a huge improvement. And this is going to reveal itself in even, even further acceleration into the future. 
Thanks, Howard. That's very great news for uh, for us and for uh, for um, our customer. And um, we can move on on the next uh, figure here. And we are going to we are going to talk about the breeding progress on various trades categories. Um, and that's uh, you know again the, the first things I can see myself easily is that uh, it, it, we had a um, simultaneous improvement on uh, not only one trades or a couple of trades, but on uh, all the important trades uh, we have selecting on. And um, please uh, um, explain a bit more on, on this award. Yes, as you're saying, it's a it's a good trend for for all the key trades uh, or trade categories. Um, and we see the largest improvement on milk production, which is a combination of volume and protein and fat percentage. Uh, last things very important, uh, especially in the Norwegian market, but we think uh, globally also. Um, and then also other conformation, uh, almost equally good development, and then um we have other health fertility and legs uh, so it reflects really the breeding goal and and how much they have uh, as a weight in the breeding goal so this is very much as we have expected and and it just shows that the breeding uh, works according to plan thanks uh well then that's uh another good news and uh Please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I believe this is pretty unique situation if we compare ourselves with uh, any other dairy breeds. I mean, this situation and these uh, very positive trends within for different trades uh, is pretty a unique situation. I, I mean, correct yes. if I yes, say that. Uh, or? I, I think so. And, and when we look at interval results later on, we will we will see exactly what you're saying. And what I think is the most positive thing or fascinating is that we are actually making progress on a large set of traits which internally does not correlate so nicely biologically they are kind of uh, it's a bit of antagonism there but we managed to overcome this and have progress in spite of this uh, negative correlation so we'll come back to that later but i think that's that's really fantastic that we managed to to make progress on all these groups at the same time. Yeah. Thanks, and let's move on on the next one. And um, oh, this is interesting because it is about the pole genetics uh, in Norwegian Red. And uh, we know uh, that pole genetics has been uh, um, has been growing as an uh, interest, uh, and not only in Norway, not only within Norwegian Red, but we know that uh, is uh, there is a growing demand. Uh, I would say both if I think about uh, North America and same as here in Europe. Uh, uh, so there are more and more dairy farmers, despite the breed they have, uh, they are asking for great genetics, but is uh, also that is also polled. And uh, again, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but I easily see a very nice positive trend here again. And just uh, please uh, comment on this, uh, Howard. Yes, yeah, that's right, Diego. It's it's a great demand for pole genetics, and and I've noticed myself quite a difference from when I first started working for Geno um, in 2015. I, I realized more and more Norwegian farmers are are asking for pulled genetics and ask or about our strategy and what we expect in the future. So. There are lots of reasons, uh, animal welfare, it's the cost of dehorning, uh, just growth of the calves, they, they they thrive and they develop nicely when, when they you don't need to, to do the dehorning. So very good development um, and it's just, this is the phenotypic trend, what we observe on cows and it's just a function of the, the gene frequency that we observe. I know we have Pole, we find pole genetics in all kinds of families, so so it's possible to have greater change now and in the future than we had when frequency was very low. So um, just a comment about the future, what we expect. Um, we will increase the weight on pole genetics in our breeding goal 
a little bit and we expect higher gain even than what we see here in the future. That's great and uh, thanks uh, thanks for your comment. Uh, um, over then it's good to know that we are, uh, is it correct to say that we are leading the the whole genetics? Uh, uh, if we just think uh, the size of our population, I mean, of course, we can't compare with bigger uh, population of, um, of cows or of course, uh, if you think about other breeds that are bigger in population compared to us, but if we think about our population and the frequency of the post bulls that we we are we have available is, I'm wrong or I'm. I I think that's that's fair to say, Diego. And and um, we know other uh, populations are focusing on pole genetics, and but they have lower frequencies, and. We have been a bit patient at the beginning of the selection because when there are very few sires uh, having the genes, if you want to have large progress, these very few sires need to be the, the, the sires of the future animals. And you narrow down your population and, and you get stuck with inbreeding. So we've been a bit patient at the beginning. And as we have reached the frequencies we are at now, then we can easily put more pressure on pole genetics without running into too much of an inbreeding problem. Yeah, and that's so, very, so, very, very important. Yeah. That's absolutely very important to do. Um, thanks. Uh, let's move on. And uh, OK, here we are going to talk a bit uh, in details about something we mentioned uh, uh, when we start this uh, discussion earlier, uh, meaning the interval result for the red dairy cattle based on the genetic evaluation published in August 2022. And um, so what we are going to do uh, that we think is important, we are going to compare ourselves with to the to the other red dairy breeds based on the interval result August 2022. And um, yeah, you can you can talk about this uh, uh what what this uh pie mean and uh, what is interbull about and yeah you can add any relevant information here please thank you um uh, interbull has separated its comparisons into different breed categories and norwegian red belong to the red dairy cattle so the comparisons are within the red dairy cattle group. And I want to point out, not everybody knows this, but Interbull is providing proofs on, on uh, bulls that are daughter proven. So they okay. are not including genomics for red dairy cattle comparisons. So that's very important to know. And that means that the youngest bulls, they will first reveal themselves uh, some years later. So this figure shows the proportion of proven bulls of the interval red evaluations the last four years. And it shows that uh, the largest proportion of bulls uh, comes from Norway, uh, followed by Denmark, Finland, Sweden, New Zealand and Canada. So it reflects just the size of, of the breeding program with number of bulls, really. Thanks for the explanation and uh, your comment, Howard. And uh, let's move on and have a look at uh, the first graph related to the interbull result, uh, right? August 2022. And I see this is about uh, the kilo protein. And that's, yes, uh, yeah, so yeah. go ahead. Yes, we spoke about the importance of, of uh, kilograms of protein a little bit earlier. And here we see that we have um, very good progress for this trait. And we have it's two things. We, we have a very good level and we are having faster progress. So, so we are getting in a stronger and stronger position when it comes to kilograms of protein. And I guess kilograms protein will be a key trait for most markets. Exactly. You're absolutely 100% correct, Howard. And 
That's what I would like to add uh, to your comment is that um, this is one of the most important uh, uh, trade for uh, almost the majority of the dairy farmers worldwide. I would say despite the where they are placed and despite the system they have, um, we have been seeing uh, over the past years that uh, kilo protein is what uh, really the majority of dairy farmers are uh, are trying to improve and are looking for because simply because the the market has been changing and uh, most of the dairy farmers are paid based on kilo protein so it's not a matter of just milk volume today in again most of the markets if we think about the world the entire world and the fact that we are uh, shining because i would say that we are shining if we compare ourselves to the other red breeds it's extremely positive uh, uh, situation and uh, really very, very positive. And um, there is an extra comment here, right? So, of course, we, we can claim that we are leading kilo protein for the red breeds based on interbull. It's not just ourselves saying that. That's important to stress. And what does it mean uh, if you if we convert that in number uh, over? If, uh, yeah. yeah, the index points uh, is nice to sometimes convert into practical <laughs> information that the farmers relate to. And if you look at the bulls born 2017, for instance, we can see a difference there in 15 index points in favor of the Norwegian red bulls. And this is equivalent to the daughters having 12 kilograms more of protein per year than daughters from the other bulls born the same year. Thanks. Thank you, Howard. Again, that's very, very positive to keep in mind, and I'm sure that all our customers are, are going to be extremely happy to see how good we are performing on this important and super relevant trade in the industry. So I'm going to move on on the next one, and I see this is extremely important as well. Uh, everybody knows how much fertility in the dairy cows is important. And uh, and we 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 know that uh, I would say that most of our customer and non-customer as well they know that Norwegian Red has been leading in cow fertility uh, I would say in the past uh, decades uh, but it's good to see that we are still doing that and uh, please over uh, make your own comment on this uh, figure. Yeah, as you're saying, you know, uh, fertility has been the, the major characteristic of Norwegian Red for decades, as you're saying. So that's kind of something that we're really proud of. And this graph just shows that we are we are still there and we are increasing our deviations to the others even further. So just really good, strong position on fertility. And just keep in mind again the, the challenging correlation between milk yield and fertility. Uh, so simultaneous good progress is very nice. Great, great. Thanks, Over. Um, is pretty a big difference, right? A big gap between ourselves and the other red breeds here. It has been that historically, and what should we expect uh, in the future? If you can just add something on on this. Yeah, I think we I think we will we will keep having a strong position. We have we have seen for both Holstein and other breeds that. A lot of them in the past have struggled with with progress for fertility and uh, because they have had a major focus on milk yield and they have not managed this combination so well. Uh, however, now I think with genomics and, and with the information they, they have seen on fertility, they, they are trying to change this. So they have maybe stabilized so they don't have the reduction anymore, uh, but uh, it's still a long way to catch up. So for Norwegian Red, I think we will we will expect a very strong position even in the future. And uh, we just see when we do top 100 rankings, uh, we dominate these ranking lists completely for fertility. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. And just take a 30 second break uh, with the new figures. And I would like just to make a super quick uh, summary of the first uh, couple of trades we have been through regarding the interbull result. 
So it was, uh, I'm here also for stressing what uh, the good things that you are showing uh, over, not only just discussing with you, of course, that's my role here today. And uh, so we have been through the milk uh, protein and fertility. And we what we saw so far is that we are leading that. If you think about the red breeds, Norwegian red is the breed that is performing the best according to Interbull. Uh, August 2022, and both uh, milk uh, protein and fertility, we know, and I'm sure most of the customers do, they are a couple of the most important traits, simply because they are so much correlated with the profitability. So uh, any dairy air that is go doing good or very good on fertility and is producing uh, a good output of kilo protein, that's something very good for the profitability of any, uh, really any dairy uh, operation. Again, despite the system, despite the place, uh, they are placed. So very good news so far, uh, the fact that, that we are really shining on protein and fertility. Now we can move on on the next one. If I'm able to. That's important trade as well. Is this is about somatic cell count, and uh, again, uh, I see a positive trend uh, even for this trade uh, in the past uh, uh, seven years. Uh, please, uh, over uh, share with us something more about uh, somatic cell count trend. Yes, um, just as an introduction, I want to to say that. What's typical for Norwegian Red is that the selection for health traits since the end of the 1970s and the major focus has been on mastitis where we had a unique position. Um, however, mastitis frequency has grown extremely low now and, and we have had a bit of a change to focus more on cell count for that reason and we just see how as we change the focus the cell count really improves uh, for the breeding value more than uh, any of the other red breeds. So we had really good progress there and um, we are expecting this to continue into the future as well. This is also great to know and um, yeah, so I was just asking what what should we expect in terms of uh, is going to be the flat, the, the trend uh, flat, uh, positive but flat or should we expect uh, even a stronger grow in the future? Mm, what, yeah, what do you know about that? What do you think? I, what? I, I think we will. I think we will see a stable continuation of, of this positive trend. I don't think we will accelerate, but we will just have good progress uh, even in the future. Great, thanks. And uh, this is the this is a, this is the new figure that we are discussing now and uh, that's another it's another very important trait for dairy farmers we are going to talk about other conformation here and um, uh, before your comment uh, uh, word um, uh, I would like just to say that um, um, as I say that's important of course and as uh, uh, Especially if we think about uh, the the trend uh, for uh, for the robotic uh, milking, automatic robotic milking, right? That's uh, as we know, that's very strong. Uh, <clears throat> that's very strong trend in Norway, but it's a positive trend also worldwide. So just let us know about uh, this other conformation trait. Uh, over, please. Yeah. Um, yes, it's exactly what you're saying with a great increase in milking robots in Norway, then the importance of other confirmation has just grown and, and uh, a lot of lot of focus on this for, for Norwegian customers and, and farmers. And this has been then implemented uh, even more into the breeding goal than it was in the past. And, and we see a very big response when we when we put pressure on this trait. So um, we are having very good progress and we just want to um, want to continue this and with the revision of breeding goals other confirmation is going to have even more focus than before and um, 
we are very happy with the development here. Thanks, and uh, what I would like to add as a comment on uh, on this uh, topic is uh, it's very positive to see that we are uh, we have been closing the gap with the other red breeds. Uh, that that's especially yeah. if you look at the like the last couple of years, uh, always talking about the daughter proven bulls, as you said at the beginning of the interval. Uh, uh, part, but uh, we are really closing the gap, and uh, that's uh, very positive and exciting for the future as well. Because if I, uh, when when we look at the young uh, Norwegian Red Bulls, the genomics, uh, genomic uh, Norwegian Red Bulls, uh, we really it's easy to expect that this trend is going to be uh, very very positive in the future because uh, we are talking about daughter proven here. But is, you know, it's not the latest genetics, uh, and we know how much we are working on the other conformation when we look at the genomic pool. So that's again simply very positive. It's very positive for our customer to know that uh, we are, I would say, improving very fast on other conformation. Yeah, and I can confirm that the young genomic sires they they just show that this steep curve is is continuing. So so. Good uh, young genomic bulls are, are way up there. Yeah, very, very good news. Thanks. Let's move on. And I see that we are at the end of this interesting discussion. Um, over, I would like to say thank you very much for sharing this great information to everybody. And it's very nice to see that we are making very positive progress for almost all the important traits for Norwegian genetics, and uh, I really believe this is important news for, for all dairy farmers that uh, are using Norwegian Red and uh, for the, the ones that are going to use uh, Norwegian Red in the near future. So I, I guess that we can summarize this session now by just by um, highlighting some of the few takeaways uh, that uh, we have been talking about. And uh, uh, so I, first uh, takeaway is that uh, uh, Norwegian Red has shown continuous progress, a very strong progress on um, and genetic improvement on on uh, most of the traits in the last decades. And uh, as uh, we were discussing over, this is uh, this is pretty unique, first of all, and uh, this is not easy to achieve. People that are people that know genetics and work with genetics, they they know that this takes time. It, and takes a lot of efforts, and I would uh, say it takes a lot of money, investment as well. So not easy to achieve, and uh, not everybody has achieved that uh, as we as we did. And why this was possible, and how this was possible, we can say there are three main reasons. Uh, the first one is that uh, Norwegian Red has the largest population or the nucleus population in the in the red breeds. Uh, we have about 200,000 cows, and that's our nucleus. It's pretty big nucleus, uh, and not only comparing uh, ourselves with the other red breeds, even with the other bigger uh, or dairy breeds. Uh, that's the first point. The second is that uh, we have a very, very strong selection intensity, and it's um, that's based on the fact that. Uh, Potentially, or in theory, uh, we can select, uh, um, we can make our selection out of 100,000 new bull calves every single year. Out of that potential, we genotype 8,000 bull calves every year, and then we buy just 50 bull calves that we, we, we name them elite bulls that are used within our breeding program. So 50 out of potentially 100,000, that means a very, very strong selection intensity. And that's extremely important for genetic pro progress, as everybody knows. And the, the third point or the third reason why we have been doing that well is that we daily, I would say daily, we listen to our customer and we take their um, feedback and we, we really understand what is important for them and what we have to provide them in order to make their business uh, really successful. And uh, I would say this is a, 
everything from my side over. I don't know if you like to add uh, your last comment before ending this uh, discussion. I think it's a very good summary, Diego. And um, and uh, I could could add one more point, which is related to research and development. We have a very strong in-house research and development team, and this means it's very short way from the research and development to implementation and to genetic progress, and we see the results. So, um, very good summary, Diego. Thanks, Ovar, and thanks for the extra comment that I agree with you fully. So, thank you so much again for the great presentation and the updated result you share with uh, with us. And uh, we we would like to invite all our partners and dairy farmers to stay connected with us and uh, just share any questions you could have after this um, uh, presentation we had. Uh, so thank you everybody and goodbye.